I'm Cameron Smith, and you're watching Western Bass TV. Hi, I'm Mark Franco, and you're watching Western Bass TV. Ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman has been fishing since he was 10 years old. Now he's 11, and he's up on the snake. We're going to teach you guys how to throw a ball and a couple of hits. So I want you guys to give him all your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for Kevin Martin. All right. Thanks a lot for the introduction. I'd like to thank uh, Fred Hall for putting such a beautiful tank up here and let us display some of these awesome techniques to you guys. And I want to thank Triton Boats for helping build this tank also. Anyways, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about frog fishing. And I got this frog, it's called Bobby's Perfect Frog and it's made by Snag Proof Frogs. And it's a really awesome new, to, new and improved frog and it's weedless, just like it says there, it's a weedless frog, you can fish it through any type of vegetation you want. It's just an awesome bait for fishing in any type of cover that you can, in, that you can find at any lake around here, on the west coast all the way to the east coast. This bait is just a phenomenal bait, especially during the summertime of the months when that water warms up and those fish get active and they move into the shallow water. This is one bait that you can count on to catch some giant bass. This is a great technique during the summer months when that water warms up. And the way that you fish this bait is you, you want to fish it into the cover. You want to cast into the cover, into those bushes, into the toolies, into the weeds, whatever type of cover you encounter, you, you want to fish this bait in, whether it's rock, weeds, toolies, bushes, whatever you encounter, this bait can go through it. It's a weedless bait, so it can be fished in all different types of cover. This bait is just really awesome. It, it, you can fish it with a really heavy rod. What I got here is a seven, ele seven foot, 11 inch rod, and you want a long rod to be able to pull those big fish out of the heavier cover. You want a lot of leverage. You want some, a good, good tip on the rod so that you can give this lure some action to it. You want to be able to jerk it and uh, pop it along. You want to kind of pop it with the rod tip sometimes. Sometimes you want to jerk it a little bit. There's just so many types of ways that you can work this frog. It's, it's amazing. It's a real versatile bait. And you want to have a long rod with a lot of leverage so when you get that big fish on and those weeds and bushes, you can just rip them right out of that stuff and not have to worry about him burrowing himself into all that cover. So this is an awesome bait. It just it fishes really nicely through all the cover. And you want to use heavy line. A few years back ago, guys tried monofilament line using this technique. And monofilament line has stretch to it. And that's something you don't want to use, something you don't want when you use the frog is you don't want any stretch in the line. You want to be able to rip that fish right out of the cover and not have any stretch. You want this line to cut through the toolies or cut through any of the vegetation. And this braided line, super braided line is perfect for that. It cuts right through, it's small diameter, it's smaller diameter than monofilament, and it just slices right through any type of vegetation that you fish it through. It's a lot better than fishing the monofilament line. A lot of guys used to use the monofilament line, but now they have switched to using this braided line. It's really key when you're using this frog. And something about the braided line is you want to tie a good, either a palomar knot or improved clinch knot. And with this braided line, you want to leave a tag end off to the end. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I got about an inch of a tag end on that frog. So that when you get that fish on and he's pulling really hard, you don't want that line to slip 
and that tag end to slip through the knot and for that bait to come off. So I always leave a tag end on my knot about an inch long and some guys will even put super glue on the knot to keep the knot from slipping. That's another secret that guys have out there is putting the, putting the super glue on the knot and leaving the tag end. Another thing they do with these frogs to, to customize them is they'll put, they'll wrap a lot of braided line around the shaft of the hook. And what that does, accidentally knocked that thing. Can you guys see that? Okay, what I've done is I've wrapped a lot of this 60 pound braid around the hooks so that the hooks do not bend out. There's no give in these hooks. They're not going to bend out at all. And as you can see, this is the older style, uh, style frog. And with these older hooks, the, the, the hooks would bend out. The fish would get their jaw in between here and twist around and be able to yank that hook right out of their mouth. So a key is to wrap that line around those hooks so that they don't bend out at all. It, keeps, it makes for a lot more solid hook set and you could really get the hook in that fish and keep them on there. And they're not gonna bend the hooks out at all. And you can also, you just tie it on there with a couple knots and then wrap it around there a bunch of times. Do, do a couple figure eights with it. And then also you can put some super glue on it to tighten it up and even make it more of a secure knot. But that's a big thing right there. That's real key to increase your hookup ratio when using the frog. It's, the, that's one thing about frog fishing is it's hard to keep all those big fish on the bait because you have such it's such a weedless bait it's hard to keep them hooked sometimes so by by doing some of these things I'm going to show you today it really increases your hookup ratio and gets those trophy fish in the boat a lot better than some of the older techniques so that's one one thing that they've done to improve this snag proof frog another thing is they've beefed up the hooks the hooks are very sharp they're a lot beefier they're a lot thicker hook they're very, very strong hooks. And if you, if you want to, you can always switch the hooks out on these baits if you want. And if, if your hookup ratio, if you're not getting all the bites that you want, you can always take a pair of needle nose pliers and bend these hooks out. You can bend them out a little bit so that they're poking out and that will also increase your hookup ratio. But if you want to keep it as weedless as possible, just keep the hooks like this. And when they bite down on that lure, they'll, they'll eat it and they'll eat it all the way down their throat and it'll hook them really good usually. And you want to use heavy line, heavy braided line with this frog. Heavy rod, long rod for flipping out there and for making long casts. Sometimes you want to make long casts way up on the shore and drag it into the water. Sometimes you want a real stealth approach. Other times you'll want it to pop. You'll want to pitch it way up in the air and let it plop down like that, like it's just jumped out of a bush or jumped off of the toolies. Other times you'll want to be real stealth with it. And the ways that you can retrieve this lure is at various speeds. Sometimes these fish want that big plop and they just want it to sit there for like a few seconds, just let it sit there. The next thing you know, your bait will disappear and there'll be a fish on there. When that happens, when the fish takes it down, you'll want to give him a few seconds for him to take that bait down two or three feet under the surface. And that's when you'll want to load up and set the hook on that fish. But remember, give him that two to three seconds delay time before you go ripping, setting the hook into that fish. You want to let him eat the bait and take it down and just set into them. And with this, with this heavy line, you can just, just rip them right in the boat. This is, this is like rope. This is 60 pound braided line. You don't want to use anything less. You want to use really heavy 60 pound braided line and you want to keep your drag pretty tight. You don't want it too loose and you don't want it extremely tight, but you want it tight enough so that they can take drag if they need to. Another thing is with this frog is you can custom color it. You can take markers like I've got here. I got a black Sharpie. I've got some green markers. 
You can take whatever kind of colors you want and you can mark up the bottom of this frog. You can put little lines, little dots, whatever you want to do. You can, you can mark up the skirt part of it a little bit. You can even trim these if you want. That's one thing about the frog is you can custom, customize it however you feel that you like it. And sometimes it can make a big difference in the, when you're fishing the frog in clear water. Other times in the dirtier water, sometimes it doesn't matter because all they see is the silhouette of the bait anyways. They're looking up at that bait, so all they see is the silhouette. They're, they look up and the, the sun, it just, it just shows the silhouette of the bait. So sometimes color doesn't even matter. But other times in the clear water, customizing it, Doing your own custom colors really makes a difference. Also, sometimes I like to color the line as well. The line can get faded sometimes on this braided line, and by taking these markers and coloring up the line, trying to camouflage it, that's another big key to, to using the frog that can be very successful, is coloring the line, making it a uh, color combination line. At least three to four feet up the line, you can do that. And that just helps also make it more stealth and more realistic looking. Those are a few of the things that you can do with the frog to kind of customize them so that your frog's a little bit different than, than what some other guy is throwing. Just something a little bit different, something a little bit more unique. And this frog doesn't really look that good in the tank. It's more, it's, it'd look a lot better if I had some bushes and maybe some weeds in here. You could, you could kind of see exactly how you fish this frog around cover. And not always do your bites come in the cover. A lot of times they'll come right when you pull off, pull out of the cover. Sometimes they'll be right at the edge of the cover. They'll be right at the edge of the toolies, maybe right at the edge of the weed line. Sometimes you'll pull it right out in that open water and that's when you'll get your bite. A lot of times you'll want to work the frog all the way back to the boat. Yeah, do you have a question? Um, the best time to throw the frog is pretty much after the spawn when they get into that top water frenzy and that water warms up and they're ready to hit the top water bait. Usually if they're gonna start hitting uh, other top water baits, Sammy and Super Spooks, that's when they're gonna start hitting the frogs too. And, and summertime's a great time. Is when you have, you know, vegetation growth, you have weeds growing with matted weeds on the surface, mossy stuff, any type of cover pick this frog up you can fish it through any type of cover you want and let's say you you have a fish blow up through that matted cover and he misses it and now you're left with a little hole in that in that moss bed you'll want to you'll want to keep a follow-up bait handy and for my follow-up baits I like to use either a creature bait or a Ica or a weightless type of bait and when you miss that fish Put this rod down and make sure you have a follow-up bait nice and close to you. Something like a Ica or a Cinco bait, something weedless. And okay, there's that, you miss that frog fish, you pick up something like this, and as fast as, as, fast as you can do it, you'll want to pitch back out there to where that hole was in, the, in those weeds where you had that fish blow up that you missed. Now you want to pitch this out there and try to get in that same exact spot where you just missed that frog fish. And something like this is what's going to get them. You're not always going to get them on the frog, but if you have something, you, you, you'll be able to locate the fish with the frog and then go in with something like this with an Ica or a creature bait and be able to catch that fish that you missed on that frog. So keep that in mind, you always want a follow-up bait handy when fishing the frog. And what I have here is I have a six and a half foot medium heavy uh, G. Loomis rod with a Shimano reel and I have 14 pound fluorocarbon fishing line on here, Berkeley fluorocarbon. And this line helps this weightless bait sink down there. I think I just got bit there. I think they're a little bit more hungry today than they were yesterday.
But what this fluorocarbon line does is it sinks faster than monofilament line, so it helps this weightless bait sink down a little bit faster. And this bait can be fished in all different kinds of situations as well. It, this bait isn't just a seasonal bait, it can be worked all year round. It's, it's a great bait for pitching around cover, pitching in under limbs. When you pitch it in, it kind of goes at the same angle that you pitch it in. And the way that you rig this bait is you hook it backwards so that it does glide in at an angle. And when you pull it along, as you can see, it goes backwards. It almost looks like a crawdad shooting backwards. And I have this hooked so that it goes back, so that the, it's hooked backwards. Most of the time you see it hooked the other way, but with this bait you'll want to hook it backwards and you'll want to use a fairly wide gap hook. It's a big bulky piece of plastic and it has a lot of salt in it and that's what helps it sink is all that salt impregnated into the plastic. This is a, a fat Ica made by uh, Yamamoto Baits. We have them right over there in the tackle department. It's very similar to a Cinco or a Zero type of bait. It has a lot of salt in it, which enables it to sink fair, at a fairly good rate of speed. And you'll want to use, you know, a four-odd wide gap hook for this bait. And you can just fish it weedless. You don't got to fish any, any uh, weight on it or anything. Just fish it weightless. And just fish it slow and, and pitch it out there where you just miss that frog fish. It can be a really good bait for, that, for following up with that frog. You get them interested in that frog bait and then you pitch in there with something like this and that will really trigger them. Are they looking at it at all? Are they interested? Maybe, sometimes if you give it a little bit of action, a little bit of jerking the rod tip, sometimes that will really trigger them. But you can see the action on this bait, how it just slowly falls. And when it hits the bottom, you just give it a couple little jerks. It looks like it's a crawdad swimming backwards. And this is a real key bait. I've been using it for about a year now. And it's, it works great. A lot of guys are starting to use it on the pro bass tournament tours. It's a really awesome technique. And it's really great to follow up with the frog. Sometimes they'll like it right in this current right here. Some of these bass were caught today, so they're still a little bit skittish, but. Another bait I like to use for following up when you're using the frog is a creature bait. And I have a bunch of them right here. Here's a bunch of examples here. Is this, this is a Yamamoto creature bait right here. It's, it's similar to the, to the Ica or to the, to the Cinco. This is a Cinco right here. I got a Sweet Beaver right here. That's another really good follow-up bait. And there's all kinds of creature baits and follow-up baits out there that work really good for following up when you're using that frog. Now this is a creature bait. And with this bait, I like to use a sinker. I like, I got right here, I got a 3 16 ounce screw-in uh, bullet weight. And you just screw it right into the head and it stays attached to the bait. So when you pull over a limb or something, or uh, matted tulies, when you pull over into those matted tulies, the weight of the head will just pull that bait and slip it right into the crevices of those tulies. And so when you get that big frog blow up back in those tulies, back around those matted tulies, you'll want something like this or that Ica handy so you can pick it up right away and pitch it right out to where you got those bites. With this technique, you can use monofilament line or braided line. And you'll just want to pitch it right back out to where you had that fish blow up. And if it's down into the bushes, down into the tulies, over some matted tulies, this bait will get down into that little crevice and fall right down in front of that fish's face. 
And that's what you want to do is you want to get right back into that fish's face that just came up on the frog because more than likely that fish is still hungry and they're still aggressive and they're going to bite again if you pitch in a bait and get it right on them. So these baits, these creature baits and fat icas and sinkos, they're great baits to, to go, that go along to incorporate them along with the frog because not all, the, not all your bites on the frog you're going to put in the boat. But by some of those techniques that I showed you with the frog to help increase your, your hookup ratio and then to follow up with a bait like this will really increase your fish, your fish catching ratio. And this technique works all year round using these creature baits, but during the summertime, when those fish move in shallow in the springtime, flipping way back in there, especially with these lakes moving up, the water coming up, the water flooding into all those tulies like Lake Hodges, El Cap, you're gonna wanna have a bait like this that you can pitch way back into that cover and get all those and be able to pull those big fish out of that cover and you'll want to use heavy line and you'll want to use a big hook too you'll want to use something like a mustad ultra bite those are really hot hooks right now they're really sharp the guy will the ultra point guy will be very happy to show you how sharp they are and how you could scrape them along wood and scrape them along rock and that hook point will still stay ultra sharp so and if you go buy a pack of ultra, uh, Mustad Ultra Point hooks, you can win a free guide trip with me, either me or Cameron Smith on one of our local lakes right now. We're going to be doing a lot of guiding coming up on these local lakes, and I'll be more than happy to show you guys, take you out on the water and show you guys how these frogs and, and how these follow-up baits work. It's a really awesome way to fish. It's fun to get away from the finesse techniques and be able to be able to use heavy line and big baits and catch big bass. And so if you guys want to check us out, come on over to the Amir, uh, come on over to the Triton booth. I'll be more than happy to show you some of the Triton boats and take you out on a Triton and show you how they run and take you out on a guide trip to one of our local lakes. It's going to be really awesome this springtime. So come check us out. And as far as uh, fishing these baits, you can fish them on a spinning rod or you can fish them on a bait caster. I prefer a bait caster because it's more advanced. I can make lower pitches, keep lower profile, make less splashes. But if you prefer to use spinning rods, spinning rods are okay with these techniques. You can put braided line on a spinning rod and you can fish the frog on the spinning rod. You can fish these creature baits and you can fish the icas on spinning rods. They're just not a bait casting bait. You can fish them on spinning rods also. Are there any questions about any of these techniques? In a second I'm going to get down and I'll show you some of these baits up close. If you have any questions, I'll be more than willing to answer them. Another thing is as far as gear ratio on your reel. I like to stick with a pretty high to high gear ratio reel. Something like a six to three ratio reel. So when you do get that fish on, you can keep up with them. A lot of times when you catch them on this heavy line, you make you may hook them out there, but in two seconds, they're already at the boat. So you want to keep a high retrieve reel so you can keep up with them. Say you pitch way out there, you want to let the line get straight down. That's where you just had that fish come up on a frog. You pitch out there, he bites, you set the hook. You want to be able to keep up with that fish. In two seconds, he's going to be flying all over the water. And in two seconds, he's going to be right at the boat here. You want to make sure that you keep, you keep your drag at fairly tight, but not too tight and not too loose. Always check your drag when you're fishing these baits. You always want to make sure you have a nice in between drag. You don't want not too tight and not too loose. Another thing is when you're fishing these baits, a lot of times when you first pitch in, you'll want to let it sit there and shake it for a second and then pull it along. If you don't get bit, reel it in, pitch it back out there. You don't want to let it sit for too long and you want to cover a lot of water. You just want to pitch it out there, shake it a couple times, fish doesn't bite, then pull it out of there, pitch it into another spot. 
and you just want to do this a lot. You want to make a lot of casts and you want to put it in in front of a lot of fish's face. A lot of times, a lot of your bites will come on the fall. Those frog fish that just came up on that frog, they're still there. So when that bait falls in front of them, as soon as you, as soon as you pitch in, watch your line. A lot of times your line will jump and something will happen. Something weird will happen. You'll see your line swim off to the side. You'll see something weird happen. You'll see your line stiffen up. It won't act normal. Another thing is to, to, you know how deep you're fishing usually, so you know how long it should take for that bait to hit the bottom. So watch that line, because if you're fishing in two feet of water, it should only take two seconds for that bait to fall and hit the bottom. If it takes any longer than that, then you know a fish must have it, and he must be swimming towards you, or he must be swimming to the side. But always watch your line. Keeping an eye on your line is really key. And as far as this frog again, is a lot of times most of your casts will be pretty pinpointed casts. You'll pitch it into a little pocket, a little grass mat, it'll be pretty pinpointed. Other times you'll be making really long casts and covering a lot of water. There's just a lot of different retrieves that you'll have to try. Try a jerking retrieve. Try just popping the tip a little bit. Try just reeling it. There's just all kinds of different ways you can work this frog, all kinds of different areas you can work it. It's not just, it's not, it, but it is seasonal. It is mostly a summertime type of deal. When that water warms up, those fish metabolism starts rising. They start feeding on the surface more. This is a bait that you'll want to throw. They're either biting it because they're hungry or because of reflex. They see that bait right over the top of the head, they just instantly, they just reflex towards it and they want to eat it up. And they're, they're going to try to kill this bait, so they're usually going to swallow it all the way down their throat. Usually when you catch fish on this bait, it's all the way down their throat and the hooks are really penetrated. With this line, it has no stretch. So when you hook that fish, it's usually hooked and you want to keep the pressure on that fish and just keep cranking them in, just keep reeling on them. Just keep the pressure on, because as soon as you let that pressure off, they'll come up and jump and spit that bait out. They'll use the bait as leverage, and they'll be able to throw it right out. So you want to keep, keep the pressure on them. When you get those hooks in them, just keep them coming. Don't give them any slack at all. Just put the pressure on and crank them right in. And just make sure you use heavy line, super braided lines, at least 60 pound braided line. You'll want to use, it's thin diameter, but it's really strong stuff. And this is Power Pro line. There are several different types of braided line out there, but this is what I prefer. I prefer Power Pro, but there's all kinds of lines out there. And you can mark up the line if it starts to get faded. And usually, as far as putting the line on, when you put this braided line on the spool, you'll want to make sure to have a little bit of a monofilament backing. You'll want to put some mono, monofilament line on the spool first and then put your braided line on. Because if you just put the braided line on the spool, it will have a tendency to want to, want to slip and curl on the spool. And that, that, when you get a big fish, it'll just, it'll start spinning on the spool. So it'll be like, what's going on? It's not your drag, it's the line actually spinning. This line, it's a little bit different than monofilament, and it goes the same way with the knot. The knot, the line will slip, so that's why you want to leave that tag in, and that's why you want to put monofilament backing on the reel to keep it from slipping. All right, if there's any more questions, I'll be walking around. I'll be down here so if, if with all my rods. So if you have any more questions about using the frog or any of these follow-up baits, we have all of these baits right over here at the tackle department. And go buy a pack of Mustad hooks and win a, fee, a free trip, a free guide trip to one of our San Diego lakes. And either me or Cameron Smith will take you out. We'll have a great time. I'll show you how to use these, this frog and all these other techniques. Thanks a lot.